Hi everyone, it's Lindy Ann from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to create this little cute Valentine bear card. We're going to be using a really cute set from Art Impressions, but we're also going to be creating this beautiful background using some of the Simon Hurley Lunar Paste. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get started with the Rectangle A2 Double Stitch Dies from Art Impressions. I've got that largest one, and then I'll grab that fourth largest one. I'll be die cutting these from some Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I'm going to run these through the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine and that'll leave that really pretty stitch border all the way around. Now I've got my palette knife from Tim Holtz and then I've got the Falling Hearts stencils from Lawn Fawn. There's two stencils in this set. We're just going to be using this first one. This one has a few more hearts on it and it's going to kind of give the look of falling hearts. We'll have less and less as we get towards the bottom. So I was going for that look, so I'm lining it up on my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station, and I'm going to grab that palette knife, and next I want to show you this beautiful lunar paste from Simon Hurley. This color is called Prom Queen, I love the name, and I'll show you a closer look at this. It's so creamy and it's got this beautiful shimmer in it. And that's due to the mica inside the paste. So it gives it this beautiful shine. So let's go ahead and start applying this. I'm just going to apply a nice even coating of this all the way around. Now you could use the second part of the stencil from Lawn Fawn, but you would need to let this completely dry and then come back in with your second layer. Again, I was going for a look where there would be less hearts down towards the bottom of the panel. So this one stencil is going to be perfect for this project. I'm scraping away any excess and I'll put all that excess right back into the jar and then take a look at how pretty this is. Now I do wanna make sure I completely wash off the stencil and that palette knife before that dries on there. So I'll give you a closer look at that panel once it's completely dry. Now let's take a look at the Valentine Bear set from Art Impressions. And look at how cute these are. You've got the little teapot, little bear with the uh, little banner of hearts, but we're going to be using these little bears at the bottom that spell out the word love. We're also going to be using one of the sentiments from this set as well. So I've placed that smaller panel that we die cut earlier into the mini Misty stamp positioner. And I'm going to just place a little bit of tape down. I just got that dotted tape runner from Tombow. And I'm going to just temporarily tape that down so it doesn't move around. And then I've got my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and we can go ahead and ink this up. I've got my Stampendable stamp press to press that out. And now we can go ahead and remove this now, if you feel that the ink is a little wet, you can go ahead and heat set that really quickly before you start your coloring. I'm starting with the Blossom Pink, and I'll be using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, and these are a water-based pen, so you can certainly blend these out with water if you would like, but I'll be using the Blender Pen, the Zig Blender Pen to do my blending today. I've switched over to Beige and Mid Brown, and all of the colors I'm using are listed in that upper left-hand corner as we're going around, along. So if you want to follow along, those colors will be right there for you to take a look at. Now, again, I'm using that blender pen to do the blending. So I started with the beige, I added the mid-brown, and then I'm going to blend those two colors together. So you can add both colors at the same time, or you can do them separately, whatever you feel most comfortable with. But here you can see I'm just going to add all my shadows right up front and then I can just go ahead and blend that out. And I'm just scribbling off any excess ink onto my scrap paper. So if you have a little too much color, just scribble that onto your scrap paper and you can remove that ink very easily. Now I'm just going to leave the little snout part of the bear in the beige and the little tummy part in just the beige. So let's go ahead and do another one. And basically I did all these exactly the same way, but I'll show you a few of these just so you get a rough idea of the coloring that I did. 
So while I'm doing that coloring, let me talk a little bit more about the lunar paste. So there's two different versions of the paste from Simon Hurley. There's the solar paste and the lunar paste, and we're using the lunar paste today. And that is a super pigmented paste. So it's really dark. It's a dark, bold look. So we got that beautiful prom queen hot color pink on our card today, which is going to be gorgeous for this Valentine card. But if you want a softer look, you can go to the solar paste. And the solar paste has a white tint to it. So it's it's got a white paste base, but it has a tint of that color in it. So it might have a tint of, of, of the uh, pink in it, or it might have a tint of gold, or whatever the look is that you're going for. There's several different colors of the paste available. So you just want to pick that one that you like the best. But again, when you lay down the solar paste, it's going to look mostly white. It's not till it's completely dry that you're going to get that look, that little bit of tint from the mica. It's kind of just a very subtle color of that, that tint. So again, with the lunar paste, you're going to get a much more bold look. And with both of these, you will get a beautiful metallic shine. So just kind of like select the paste that works best for you. But they're both beautiful. They're both really creamy and easy to apply. So now I've gone on to do the letters and I started with the, the green and then I'm going to go to the pink and the wine red to do the letter O. And here I realized I forgot to finish coloring in his little paw. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So I am going to add a few little shadows to these letters just to give them a little dimension. Now we're also going to be adding some little white dots to each of these letters once we're done. But you could certainly do some really nice paper piecing here. Just stamp the letters again on different colors of pattern paper and then cut those out and apply those or glue those to your cardstock. That would give you a really interesting look. You could have some plaids and stripes and polka dots, whatever you want to do. But I thought I would color these in because I did want to add some little polka dots to these. Now I am switching to smoky teal and dark agate to do the letter E. Now again, keep in mind you could do all of these in the same color, but my thinking was I want to keep all of their shirts the same color. So they'll all be in white shirts with little pink hearts on the shirt. But you could switch that up and do the shirts in all different colors and do the letters the same. Whatever you want to do, just kind of mix it up. And certainly by changing that out, you're going to completely change the look of your card. So that's what's really fun about this. So now for this last one, let's go ahead and grab bright yellow and scarlet red. And I love these two colors together. I use this combination a lot to get kind of a creamy, I call it creamsicle color. It's the best way I know to get that really pretty creamsicle color. And I again added both colors at the same time and I'm just going to blend those together. Once that was done, I'm grabbing the light gray. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to keep all of the shirts white. But by adding a little bit of the gray, we can add a little shadow and a little interest to these shirts. So this is really quick and easy to do. And then I'll grab that sugared almond pink and do those little hearts right in the centers of the shirt. And then next I'm going to grab that white gel pen and I'm going to add these little polka dots to each of these letters. Now you do want to wait till the ink is a little bit drier. I went a little too quickly. So you want to make sure those letters are dry before you come in with that white ink. So I did go over those two times. And then I wanted to brighten up the whites of the eyes. So I'm using that same gel pen to do that. And I'm adding a little tiny reflection in the center of each of the eyes. Now I've got the Spun Sugar Distress Oxide ink from Tim Holtz and I'm going to go all the way around this panel. 
just to soften those edges a little bit and bring in a little bit more pink. Of course, more pink. But I, I thought it really finished off the edges. You could certainly add any of these colors that you like. Um, any of the colors we used in the letters would be really pretty. So let's go ahead and set that aside. And let me give you a closer look. This is dried now and look at how gorgeous this is. Now I did want to add that same pretty pink border all the way around. So I'm making sure that this is completely dry, I can now go over it with that ink and then just buff away any excess that's sitting on top of those hearts. You want to make sure you do that because otherwise it could come off on your hands. I'm going back to that same sponge sugar ink pad. I'll apply that directly to my glass medium mat and I'm going to just add some water from my distress sprayer and spatter this entire panel. That's going to bring everything together. So let's go back to those rectangles and pick that third largest rectangle just to create a nice little layer for behind the bears. And I've die cut that from, again, some Strathmore Bristol Smooth white cardstock. So let's go back to that same stamp set and grab this sentiment that says, pausing to say, happy Valentine's Day. We're going to only stamp the pausing to say portion of the sentiment on the front of the card. And we'll stamp the rest of it on the inside. So I've got some post-it labeling tape and I'm going to cover the Happy Valentine's Day section of the stamp. Now you could certainly cut the stamp in half if you prefer, but I'm just going to use that post-it tape and we'll just mask off the second part of the sentiment, ink up that stamp, make sure you remove that post-it tape because I've done that before and not removed it. And then once we remove it, we can go ahead and stamp that portion of the sentiment. Now I've got my Pit Artist pen. This is the 0.1 millimeter black pen. And I'm going to add three little dots after the word say. Now I want to create a second panel for the, the rest of the sentiment on the inside of the card. So I cut a second one of that fourth largest die. Now you could certainly cut all of these up front when you're doing your die cutting, but at this point I wasn't exactly sure what the card was going to look like. So I die cut another panel and we're going to use that on the inside of the card. And now we're just going to stamp the portion of the sentiment that says Happy Valentine's Day. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to mask off the top portion of the sentiment with that post-it tape. Make sure you press that down really well so none of that ink gets in underneath there. We can go ahead and ink that up, removing that post-it tape. We can go ahead and stamp this. And I'm just pressing lightly just to make sure I get a nice crisp image. So now I did see a little bit of a smudge of black on there. I'm not sure where it came from, but I'm just using my sand eraser from Tombow to clean that off. Now I've got some ink. I've gone back to that sponge sugar ink. I've placed some on my glass medium mat just like we did before. And I'm going to spatter this panel as well to tie those two panels together. Now going back to that same stamp set, again, I'm going to grab the XOXO. I'm going to stamp that right below this sentiment. The reason I thought this would be cute is because I want to color in those letters the exact same way we colored in the letters on the front. So everything will match up really nicely. Now I've got this cute little border punch or border die. And this is from the journal template die set from Art Impressions. This is part of that watercolor series. And all of these dies come in this set to create a really cute little journal. I know I use this set all the time. I love it. I've got a piece of cardstock from Hero Arts, this really pretty pink color. And I'm going to line that up right along the edge of this cardstock and run that through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. So let's go ahead and attach these two together. Again, I'm going back to that little dot runner tape dispenser and we'll line this up. So let's go ahead and start some assembly. I've got some 3D foam tape 
I'm going to apply this a good amount of it on the back of this panel so that this stands up nicely on our card. I've got my Cricut weeding tool. I like to just press down with the flat end of the tool and then pull up that backing. So if you have trouble removing the backing from your tape, this little tool is a lifesaver. So let's go ahead and create the card. This panel measures four and a quarter by 11 inches and I'm scoring it at five and a half inches. I'll press that out with the bone folder. And I do want to mention at this point that all of the supplies I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. Let's go ahead and grab some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. We can glue down this beautiful background with that pretty lunar paste on it. And then I'm going to add this panel to the inside of the card really quickly so we can finish the assembly on the front of the card. And then we can go ahead and add a little bit more of that foam tape. So this will have foam tape, a couple layers of the foam tape, which will be really nice to make this panel with the bears stand out really nicely. Again, I'm going back to that Cricut weeding tool. We'll just remove that backing. And then I'm just putting these, the inside sentiment and this one on a little bit of an angle, just for a little bit more interest. Now I've got that light gray pen and I just thought I needed to ground these little bears just a little bit. So I added a little bit of gray right under their feet just really quickly. And now I've got the multi-medium matte glue. I'm going to add a little dot of this right in the center underneath those, that panel with the bears on it. And I've quickly tied a little ribbon. This is some white ribbon with a little bit of a shimmer to it. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that right in the center. I've got my reverse tweezers just to clamp that down and let that dry. And I want to add some Hero Pearls in the white. I'm loving these pearls. They go on so easily. I'm going to add some three little dots down here at the bottom on the right. And then a couple little dots of pearls up at the top. And this will just bring everything together. I just love these. And then as a final touch, let's add some Wink of Stella clear glitter pen on those little hearts on their shirts. And the next thing we want to do is add, go, going back to that black pen, that Pit Artist pen, I want to darken up the noses. So I'm going to add some black to each of their noses. You could certainly use a black gel pen here as well if you want a little bit of shine. So I'm just going to darken those up. And now we can set this aside to dry completely. Go ahead and take a look at the finished card. And we've got this cute little sentiment on the inside of the card. And take a look at that lunar paste. It is just so beautiful. It's got that beautiful mica shine to it and those cute little bears. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.